This tutorial will review simple ID turning on a Mazak lathe. I'll start with a program open to editing, previously faced to zero and drilled through. This is a very simple contour, expanding the 1.5 inch hole to a 2.5 inch bore. To begin, select turning to view the available turning operations. For basic turning, I can use either bar or copy. VAR is for simple round work from a raw bar. Copy is intended for rework or turning a preformed casting. Copy adds two additional entries for defining the amount of stock on a surface. By doing so, the control can eliminate unnecessary air cuts for more efficient processing. However, my part is a simple round so I'll choose bar. Machining part, selects what part of the piece I'm working on, the OD or ID, the face, or the back. The highlighted choices tell the control the section to work on is confined. In most cases this means approach at a clearance value, then position in for the cut, basically, steering around the obstructed section of the part. In this case I'll choose in, without the highlight, since I'm starting the cut at Z0. Cutting point X and Z is where the tool will encounter stock. For X it's the drill size of 1.5, for Z it's the front of the stock at 0. Finish allowance is how much stock to leave after the rough cuts for the finish pass. I'll leave 20 thousandths, equal to 10 on a side in X, and 5 thousandths in Z. The control has chosen a general, in, 4A from my turret. Checking tool data, this tool will fit my bore at 1.1 inches. Is a 55 degree insert and has a 32 thousandths radius. I'll skip priorities and move on to cutting pattern. These five patterns determine the precise tool path in the cut. Pattern 0, tells the control to finish the back wall to the stock diameter even if not defined. Pattern 1, tells the control to escape and not finish the back wall if not defined. Pattern 2, is used when cutting a deep bore with a large boring bar. With pattern 2, a length of cut is set in parameter TC54, available as a TPC setting, for the incremental depth. This depth is cut repeatedly until the full depth of the bore is reached, inching the bar into the bore a little at a time for better chip evacuation. It's important to note, only the rough cuts are handled this way. The finish cut is done in one pass for a smooth finish. Patterns 3 and 4 are identical to patterns 0 and 1 but with a chip breaking function handy for materials that don't easily break a chip. Chip breaking, is done by pausing the tool for a revolution or two at the incremental length of cut, given here under the depth 2 column. My boring bar should be able to complete this bore with a basic type 0 pattern. Max depth of cut, is cut depth per pass. This can be auto set by selecting one of these tool material buttons, or by simply setting a desired max depth of cut. I'll just enter 80 thousandths for a depth of cut. The auto set surface speed is fine but to get a smaller chip I'll set my feed per revolution to 10 thousandths. And I'll turn on coolant with an M8. Going through the finish tool is pretty simple since it's just making one pass. If desired, I can tell the control to leave a little stock on the surface, using finish allowance X and Z. Choosing coating L auto for speed and feed, gives me an acceptable setting for both. Again, I'll turn on coolant with an M8. Defining the shape of the cut is straightforward, using a few simple lines. For a starting corner, I'll add a small chamfer to clean the burr off. The bore finishes at a diameter of 2.5 inches in X and a depth of 2.5 inches in Z. Final corner, allows for entering a chamfer, a radius, or a predefined shape at the end of a line. Simply entering a value, assumes a corner chamfer. Highlighting the corner R button, changes that to a radius. Or you can choose from one of these predefined shapes. This drawing excerpt from the Mesa Troll programming manual, gives you an idea of the tool needed to create these forms. Surface finish feed rate, is an opportunity to adjust the feed rate of individual lines in the definition of a part shape. You can enter a new feed rate directly in inches per revolution. Or, you can choose to have the control calculate one for you, by choosing a preset value. These presets are shown in this manual excerpt as 1 being rough and 9 being very fine. When this field is left blank, the feed rate, is the program finishing tool feed rate. To complete the bore, I'll add a second line with another 10 thousandths chamfer to deburr the 1.5 inch hole. This line will go into the hole just far enough to create the chamfer, plus clear the radius of my finish tool defined as 32 thousandths, so 50 thousandths in should work well. Note, 
Since I used a type 0 cut pattern, I do not have to define the vertical wall at the back of the bore. Shape end, finishes the definition of the ID cut. Selecting the bar in process and zooming in the graphic window shows the cut exactly as I have defined it. Looking at the TPC data for this process I'd like to point out a few important settings. TC39 sets the approach clearance in front of the part in Z. TC40 sets the contour back clearance at the back of the defined shape in Z. TC38 sets the x-axis relief clearance at the end of the bore. I'm going to change TC38 just a bit, giving more clearance on the back of my boring bar when in the 1.5 inch hole. Although 39 thousandths will work, in this case I'm going to change it to 10 thousandths just to give an example of handling tight bores with a large boring bar. This means when my bar finishes cutting the chamfer in the drilled hole, it will only back off 10 thousandths before exiting the hole in Z. When editing TPC, the change to the indicated parameter is effective only for this process. In this program, the original parameter retains its default value unless you go to the parameter page to change it there. Be sure to select TPC end to save your changes. When TPC settings have been changed in a process, this blue highlighted plus symbol marks that process. To see the details of my toolpath, I'll add an end unit. Select Program Complete and select Toolpath to view the toolpath of my cut. Make sure the display is set to Position Display. Click on the right-hand side of the screen. Select Section, then ZX Plane. Using path step I can follow the program path of my tools throughout. As you can see the bore is done with successive rough cuts and finished with a single finish pass. Use path step to step through the finish pass of the boring bar. When the pointer moves to the end of the chamfer in the bore at 2.55 inches. Read the X dimension of 1.436 inches and click path step. The X diameter drops to 1.416 then exits the bore. This is showing the 10 thousandths, on a side, clearance set in TC38. Back on the program page, delete the end unit and hit shape end. We're ready to continue programming the part.